Phil, we just got on the lake now, and we're not seeing much action happening. So what patterns would you choose to start with, and what food would they imitate? Well, that's, that's a great question, Bill. Um, we always want the match the hatch, but that's not always reality. And I always start with staple food items. And by staples, I mean food sources that are prevalent all the time. So patterns such as scuds, um, leeches, dragonfly nymphs, damselfly nymphs, forage fish, and coronamids, both larva and pupa. Now, people may say, well, wait a minute, isn't a pupa an emerging insect? Yes, it is, but coronamids are so widespread. There's over 2,500 species in Western North America alone. They hatch all the time, and the fish become so conditioned to seeing them, they always respond instinctively when one's well presented in front of them. So that's where I'd start. Okay, well, here's something different. We were uh, seeing fish busting up minnows in the shallows, and closer inspection, there's just so many minnows in there that I decided, hmm, I'm gonna give them something they always eat. So I picked up the floating line again, the long leader. I've got two coronamids on here, two ice cream cone style coronamids uh, with a white bead. That, these white beads really stand out well in these algae stained waters. Other yarn type gill materials that we use can sometimes get fouled. And again, it felt like the line was just tightening. And I think I might have a brown on here because this is bulldogging down, which is very, yeah, you took the bottom and it's a nice brown, I think. Yes, it is. Beautiful looking brown, I trout, I believe. Well, maybe it's hard to tell the way this light is right now. We'll get them in closer and see. But uh, there's that coronamid right in the jaw. Yeah, it's a brown trout. Beautiful little brown. Well, I might do a little throat pump here because we want to find out what the predominant food item is and perhaps refine our presentation, although this coronamid technique seems to be one, one thing we need to consider. So again, that's just casting it out, and I let that sink an awful long time, probably 30 or 40 seconds, which can be a little, a little excruciating for some. But you've got to wait for those small weighted patterns to get near the bottom. And I'm just hand twisting, just basically maintaining tension on the fly, the slowest of retrieves. It, it may, I may be gathering a foot of line uh, every 10 seconds or, or less, very slow retrieve. There's a beautiful brown right there. A beautiful Manitoba brown. Really unique here in the parkland region because they have great populations of large browns, rainbows, um, tiger trout, which are a brook brown trout hybrid. Some really interesting opportunities here and they grow to big proportions. These are very productive lakes with lots of food sources for these trout to feed and grow upon. We'll let them go. That's a beautiful 20-inch brown trout right there. 